All right, guys, welcome back. It is uh, now a lot later than the hour I thought it was going to be. Uh, it is now later in the evening. It's been um, probably a good four or five hours since I left my cider alone. I had intended on coming back in an hour, but the day got ahead of me, got away from me, whatever. Uh, but that's actually a good thing because I didn't realize that uh, I, there was something I needed to do anyway, and that is let our cider come up to room temperature. So just a quick thing to note about yeast. Uh, you got to think of yeast as a living thing because it is. So when you're fermenting, you're basically trying to give your yeast uh, an environment to where they will thrive and be happy and do the work of converting the sugars into alcohols for you. You can't just throw yeast into a bucket and hope for the best. I mean, you can, but it's not going to turn out too good for you. So if you want a nice, clean, flavored cider, what you want to do is provide the best environment for your yeast as absolutely possible. And uh, the reason why I say that is because bringing our cider up to room temperature basically allows us to pitch our yeast and uh, that won't put them into some sort of immediate shock from being thrown into like icy cold liquid. So uh, just imagine throwing yourself into an icy cold pool. You wouldn't want that and neither does your yeast. So to pitch our yeast, uh, what we do is we read the instructions on the yeast. And this time uh, for this batch, I'm going to be using Nottingham's uh, Nottingham Ale Yeast, actually. Um, this is not technically a cider yeast, but it makes a really good cider. It's a really, really sturdy yeast. Uh, so if you're just getting into it, I'd highly suggest Nottingham L yeast. It actually produces a pretty tasty cider, in my opinion. Uh, so that's one of my go-tos if I'm kind of trying to do something quick uh, and nothing too special. This is kind of like my go-to. Uh, so Nottingham L yeast, make sure you check that out. So in order to pitch our yeast, what we need to do is we need to check the back here. And you can see that it requires four ounces of water uh, between 86 degrees to 92 degrees Fahrenheit uh, of basically just warm water. And what you want to do is you want to toss uh, your yeast into there to let it uh, rehydrate basically for about 15 minutes. And that's what we're going to go ahead and do now. So here you can see we have our water at temperature. And I have a sanitized spoon and of course my sanitized uh, thermometer, which I don't need anymore because it's at temp. And this is nice, just kind of lukewarm water. So all we're going to do is we're, even though we're only doing a gallon, I'm going to go ahead and do the entire package. I think you can use an entire one of these for six gallons, but, uh, I don't really like opening and leaving it open, but just to give our yeast a good head start, what I'm going to go ahead and do is just pitch the entire thing. You can, uh, break this up into smaller portions, but I am just going to use the entire thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just stir it in nice and easy. It'll become kind of milky. I'm just going to stir it until it seems like it's kind of dissolved pretty well. And then as per the instructions on the package, I'm just going to wait about 15 minutes for it to rehydrate. So you can see here this amazingly tasty looking liquid. <laughs> Uh, but uh, that's yeast, and that is what is going to turn your sugars and your juice into cider. All right, so it's been about 15 minutes, so that means that the yeast should have fully hydrated by now. So uh, let's go ahead and pitch our yeast. All right, so you notice I put a paper towel over the top of my yeast. I did not want it to have anything drop in, any sort of dust or anything. Uh, this is looking nice and foamy. Let's see if I can see it. Here we go. Nice and foamy, so that means they're already active and already happy. <laughs> so what we're going to do is over here, I have a bucket. It's always good to have a bucket in the cider shop. Uh, I've got a funnel in there. I've got an airlock in there. I've got a bung in there, and uh, it's been sitting in sanitizer for a little while now, so everything should be nice and clean. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and remove the lid here. I'm going to get my funnel ready. And this is going to look a little weird. <laughs> it's all bubbly and stuff. That's actually not a problem. That's just sanitizer. That's not soap. So that's not going to give you a bad time. Um, and it's not going to hurt anything. It's just going to keep it clean. So what we're going to do is give it one last little mix here. Make sure you got your cider at at least close to room temperature. This is still a little cooler than I'd like, but it should be fine. Uh, this is still nice and warm. Not too warm though, of course. So we're just going to kind of, let's just uh, 
bring you along for the ride here. Oh, yummy. <laughs> it looks gross. It really does look gross. And of course, the yeast smells kind of like bread. It's got an interesting scent to it. But it's a, it's a scent you learn to like. You see it getting in there. There's that layer. Right there, you can see already. Shake it just a little bit. Anyway, I don't want to shake it too, too much. Just yet. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and pull the funnel off and just kind of put that out to the side for right now. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on. Just for a second. So normally, one thing you don't wanna do with cider uh, after it's fermented is introduce oxygen. Because oxygen, I don't know exactly the reason why, but oxygen can really mess with the flavor and uh, I think it oxidizes it somehow. Uh, but whatever, whatever. <laughs> you don't want oxygen in your cider. Um, however, to get your yeast started, they do need oxygen. Kind of, you know, you know, they, they got to breathe. They got to, they got to be able to do the whole yeasty thing, and uh, they require oxygen. You want to provide as much oxygen to them as possible to start with. So, might as well go ahead and shake the shit out of it. I'm gonna let a little pressure off. Okay, there wasn't anything. Flea. Give it another shake. All right, that should be good. All right, so for the last step of this process, we're gonna go ahead and put the bung and the airlock in. The bung is basically like a little rubber stopper that we're gonna put in here with a hole in it. And the airlock basically allows, uh, I believe it's CO2 to exit out of the top, but not let anything in. Because when uh, fermentation happens, Gases are released, which creates pressure in here. So you never want to start fermentation with a sealed vessel or else you're going to have a bad time because it's going to pop. It's going to be a mess. You don't want to do that. So what we're going to do is go ahead. I'm just going to loosen this up. I'm not going to open it up because I don't want anything getting into it just yet. But I'm going to go ahead and reach into my sanitizer water here. I got my bung and my hands are all wet, but it's fine. It's just sanitizer, not soap. So we're just going to kind of gently put that in there just like that. It'll kind of want to slip out a little bit. Don't push it all the way in because it's going to pop in there and you don't want it to go into your vessel. But uh, it's all good. <laughs> so this is an airlock. And the way this works is there. Uh, this is kind of like, it's kind of open on the inside here. And then there's a tube that comes out the bottom here. So this actually is solid all the way up to the top of there. So water goes in here, or sanitizer is what I use, uh, up to, there's this, this line here that's kind of in the plastic. So I fill it up about that far, and then there is a, if I can find it here, there is like this bell that sits on top, just like that. And so what happens, so I'm going to get some sanitizer here. So what happens is you got your liquid in there, you got your bell that sits on top. So what happens is the Gas pushes in from up here, goes through the top, and bubbles this little middle piece up. So it floats and makes bubbles, and then there's actually a cover that just uh, sits on top of there to keep everything all together. And that goes in here just like this. I usually like to just give a little bit of twist back and forth, just kind of get it down in there. And that should be good. It's going to try to push up a little bit. I'll have to keep my eye on that. but. Our cider is ready to go. So what happens here? Uh, <laughs> well, what is happening now is the yeast is becoming acclimated uh, to its new home. It's starting to say, hey, there's food around me. Maybe I should get down and start eating it and maybe start pooping out some alcohol. And that's exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> so um, over the course of the next few days, this will slowly start to get, uh, get kind of fizzy. And then we'll start to see active, uh, activity in the airlock and it'll start bubbling. And what I'm going to do is over the course of the next few days is I'm going to document every time I go to check this to see where we are. And then uh, what I like to do as well is to sniff the airlock. Let's see. If, can you even see where I'm pointing? I like to sniff the airlock just to see if I, I smell anything weird. So the moment I smell anything sulfury, 
I like to put in just a little bit of yeast nutrient. So basically sulfur, if you smell anything weird, especially sulfur, it's basically your yeast telling you, uh, well, I'm not too happy. We, we, we need something different, something, something better. Uh, we're either stressed because the temperature is bad. Uh, we're either not getting enough nutrients because we've eaten through all the nutrients that's in the cider, but there's still more sugar to be eaten, but we still need nutrients in order to survive. So, you know, that's what that's for. That's what I do. So I just realized that I mentioned temperature and I didn't explain anything about that before. So temperature is very, very important when making a good cider. Uh, different types of ciders, different styles of cider require different temperatures uh, for different yeasts. But the main idea is if you're just starting out and you want just a nice clean tasting cider without anything too crazy, as long as you just stay within the temperature, the fermentation temperature range of your yeast, then you'll be fine. So what I would suggest is uh, whatever yeast you use, go to Google, uh, search the type of yeast you're using, uh, the, the, the manufacturer and the type of yeast, and find that fermentation temperature range and make sure that when you ferment, that you try to stay as close to that range as possible. Um, I'm lucky enough to have a fermentation chamber with a uh, temperature control box that I built. I'll show you guys that later. Uh, but if you don't have that, if you have a chili apartment or if you have a fridge that you can set a specific temperature to, uh, I would advise that. Uh, if you can't do that, then then you're kind of on your own. But it, what I would highly suggest is to control the temperature as much as possible. Keep it as even as possible. If you get too warm, you're going to stress your yeast out and they're going to produce off flavors. If you keep it too cold, you're gonna, they're going to be chilly and they may not even ferment all the way through um, and eat all through all the sugar that's in the cider. So you want to keep them as close to the uh, suggested range as possible. And that's what we're going to be doing. All right, well, that's pretty much it. This is batch 50 uh, for me. I guess it's batch one for you guys. Um, I am going to go ahead and put this over in my fermentation chamber, and I'm going to check on it tomorrow, see if any fermentation has happened. Uh, it might not because it usually takes about 24 hours uh, to see any sort of airlock activity, unless these guys are just really, really excited, and then they'll go to town. But uh, we'll check tomorrow and see how it goes. So, uh, guys, I hope you're enjoying this. Uh, cider making with the Hagger Nerd, whatever it is. <laughs> I'm enjoying making these videos. So let me know what you guys think about this down in the comments. If you have any questions, any comments, any anything at all you want to discuss about cider making or anything at all, I guess, uh, leave them down in the comments. Let me know and I'll do my best to get back to you guys and let you know uh, my thoughts on things, any uh, answers to any questions you may have, etc., etc. <laughs> so guys, uh, yeah, I'll catch you in the next video. As always, thanks for watching. Take care.